Welcome back everybody. Today got this Mercedes 5 S550 and we're going to be changing out the front rotors and front pads. Doesn't look like an extremely difficult job. Pretty sure I've done this one before. Uh, yeah, everything still looks like it's in good shape. He just wants to put new rotors on there because I think he's getting a uh, pulsation in the pedal from a little warpage in the rotors. So let me gather up some weapons of war here and I'll be back shortly to let the drama ensue. Folks, so first thing I want to do here is get our little rotor locking screw out of here and that is a T30. But from the looks of it, it's probably not going to come out of here real friendly. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is heat it up with a map gas torch and hopefully get that metal to expand and let go of that screw. Heated up. Let's see if we can get this thing to twist out of here. <clears throat> Not want to come out of there. Oh, there it goes. What I'm using for this, like I said, is a T30, and I've got a half inch to three eighths adapter. So I'm using a half inch ratchet. I'm gonna go ahead and get this joker out of here. Sit him off to the side to cool down. All right. So the next move is gonna be to get our caliper free. What I wanna do is get our pads out of the caliper. And what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to knock these pins this direction towards the engine and as you can see this end has a bevel on it to keep it from sliding back through the other direction and so does this bottom one right there if it'll focus oh baby focus now anyway it's right here so what I'm going to do is take a small punch and a hammer and we're going to try and drive that back through there. Hopefully it's not frozen. A lot of times I find on these foreign cars that the salt creates so much rust and the weather up here where we are, it just makes this a disaster. But hopefully these will come free because the pads don't look like they're in really bad shape. Look like they have plenty of life left. But we're going to be changing those as well. So let me uh, grab a punch and I'll come on back. All right, let's see if we can knock this thing out of here. Hopefully it'll come right out. Got some movement. There we go. Ah, right, let's see if we can get the bottom one loose. Right there. Yeah, there we go, baby. She's free. Excellent. All right. So what we're gonna do? Continue to drive those on out of there, and that will release this clip right here. This is a tension clip. Put your pressure on there, you can feel the resistance, and that'll release that. And from there, we can sorry, we can pull our pads straight out. Once I got to that point, when I get these pins out, I'll come on back. We can get this pin the rest of the way out of here. What I'm going to do is take some pliers and put it on the very end of this right here. You have to watch it because there's a little, little ferrule or bushing on that rod. You don't want to squeeze that. So we just want to squeeze the end of it. And then we want to push in on this tab right here. 
Just kind of walk this out of here. Hopefully, that's the plan. Doesn't want to come out of there, but it will. Let's start to move out of there. So let me see if I can knock this rest of the way out of here. There we go. That takes the tension off our clip. Probably pin down here it should come out a little easier because it doesn't have that tension on it. All right, and that's what our pins look like. I'm gonna hit these on the wire wheel and clean them up. A little bit of paint, a little bit of rust. Okay, so that should allow us to get our pads out. I'm just gonna try and press these pistons in here a little bit. Uh, well, you have a screwdriver when you need it. So now we're gonna try this again. Try and take our screwdriver and just push the piston back in on the caliper just enough so we can free this pad up some room to get it out. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Okay. With any luck, the pads ought to come right out of here. There's one. Our second one. Right, so now we need to get those two 21 millimeter bolts on the back. Broke loose. Now to get the caliper loose, we got one bolt here, and then we got another one right here. And those bolts are a 21. Crack these 21s loose. Got one up here. All right, that one came loose. We got another one at the bottom. Right there. There we go. do is get this caliper out of the way and that'll allow us to get to our rotor. Doesn't look like it's a, gonna be stuck. Look like it'll come right out of there. As should this caliper. What your caliper bracket bolt will look like, I should say. So we got one more up here at the top, and I'm gonna find a cord to hang my caliper up with. And once I get the caliper out the way and hung up, I'll come on back. All right, so we got that caliper out the way. We got it hung up here with a tie strap hanging off the top of the control arm. We're gonna go ahead and. Pull this roller out of here and uh, see what the surface looks like back here. Pretty sure it's going to need a cleaning. Yeah, a little rusty there. 
Oh yeah, back surface of these rollers is questionable at the very least. Yeah, surface is kind of jacked up there. All right, so I'm gonna get my wire brush and uh, clean all of this up and I'll come on back. I got my hub all cleaned up and put a little grease on there. And I also took the liberty of cleaning the caliper pins here and all the rust off there and the little stuff that was on the end of it. And we've got brand new rotors. Yeah, they sure look good when they come out the box, don't they? Man, drive them two days and they look like shit. All right, so I'm gonna get this out of here and I'm gonna get our rotor put back up on our hub here and get our retainer screw back in there. And uh, I'll come back when I got to that point. Rotor in place and got my set screw back in there. And one thing I wanted to talk about here quickly is if you decide to put these slotted rotors on here, you gotta be careful that you put them on the right side because they are labeled. See, that one has front driver side. The box I originally opened up had front passenger side on it, as you can see. So, yeah, I had to open the other box. But yeah, be careful with that. They are made to uh, circulate the wind through there a certain direction. All right, so my next move here looks like is dealing with this caliper. And what we need to do is push our pistons back into their bores. So on this caliper, you've got two on that side, and then you've got two on the inner side there. I don't have the correct tool for this. What I think I'm going to do is improvise and use a pair of channel locks. I'll probably put the old pad back in there, or maybe put the old pads back in there and then uh, try and take a pry bar, two pry bars, and push them back in. They're relatively loose, so they should slide right back on you. But, uh, let me get some tools together for that, and I'll come on back. So what I decided to do was to mount the caliper uh, back where it goes, tighten those caliper bolts up, those caliper bracket bolts I should say, and get those tightened up before I decided to push my pistons in. And since I don't have the correct tool, what I took was a pry bar. Let's see if I can get this set up here. I just took a pry bar and took my rag, put the rag in here to protect the rotor and just basically pushed in on my piston until it went in and it went in relatively easily so no big deal uh, at this point I'm going to get the pads and I'm gonna come back and stick our pads in here and we'll get our pins and our tension clip back in there and that will probably be about it for that but I'll come on back when I got to that point See if we get these pads in. Hopefully they go in without a problem. It should just slide right on in. There we go. There we'll get our outer one in here. Beautiful. Right on in. And what I'm gonna do is a very very light coat of grease on this slide pin try and keep it from rusting up as fast as it did I'm gonna put that in our bottom slot here Let me get that pad to line up through there same way on this end Hoping I can get this clip in here. Hoping there's enough. Nope, not gonna happen. Looks like we gotta put the clip in. It's not quite lined up here. Okay, 
I'm just gonna tap this in a little bit. That's good enough for now. And our next trick is gonna be to get that upper pin in there. Well, that'd be fun. time while we're popping it in there. Yes, that is the end of my ratchet I'm using for a hammer. Alright, we're obviously going to have to tap those in a little bit further, but Essentially, that is how everything goes back together. And I'm going to take a punch. Let's see if I can push these in. I should be using a smaller hammer, but run what you brung, right? Okay, good solid hit. That's in. All right, folks. That about concludes that. Uh, always remember to get in and pump your brakes back up. Gotta push all your fluid down back to your caliper again. Otherwise, you will not have any brakes. Don't forget that. So at this point, I'm gonna call it quits on this. I'd have to say this is just about complete. I'm gonna Clean up the little stuff I got here left over. And I'm gonna head on over to the other side, which I'm not gonna do a video on because it's essentially the same thing as this. So hopefully this helped you out in some kind of way. If it did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, should hit the share button. Either way, I'll see you on the next one. What I wanted to come back and say is on this passenger side, there's a little bit of a different setup here. If you notice, we've got our wires here to go to the sensor and the pad and this is going to have to come out of the way in order for us to get this spring out of here and so what we've got is see that is an e10 socket back here right there this is what the tool looks like so we're going to have to loosen that up get that out of there free play there with our wiring and this should flex out the way all right other than that it's the same process and the sensor uh once i get these pads out i'll show everybody i put that sensor in there and take it out normally you replace it with a new one because chances are this doesn't survive when you're trying to take it out but we'll see if it makes it it makes it if it doesn't we'll change end up changing it but i'll be right back now to get this little sensor out of here i usually take a little WD-40 and spray it on it. Give it as much lubrication as I can. And then lightly take a screwdriver and kind of twist it on up out of there. Like I said, normally I would replace this with a new one. But the guy didn't bring me one, so he said, go ahead, try and salvage the old one, and if we can, we're good. And if not, you know, you have to bring one to me. So there, it's coming out of there. So the Take it easy because it is an electronic part, a little very delicate one too. Okay, there we go. And that's got a slot on it. It slides down into that groove on the pad. Let me try to get 
just doing the focus. All right, now I'll get my new pad. We'll stick that in there. Pad here. We're just gonna push that down into there like that. And that's that. This connector just pulls apart from the connector that's on the car. And that should about handle that. Welcome back everybody. Here we are with part two of the front brake job on the Mercedes. And I wasn't going to film a second part to this because thinking both sides were going to be the same, weren't going to incur any problems. And once I started taking this side loose, we had all kinds of issues here. First problem I got is this piston here is frozen. All the other ones here, here, and this one in here go back in just fine. This is the only one that doesn't want to play nice. So with that being said, we got to change this caliper. And I think we're going to change the entire line too that goes with the caliper. So let me get some weapons ready here for this battle and I'll be right back. We have got our new caliper. Uh, comes with some new pins. We got our pad sensor. And we've also got our new line right here. Now this line and caliper is a little bit of a different setup than most cars. Because most cars have the banjo boat with the washers. I'm trying to get this steady here. For this, our line is threaded in. So here is our line. And what we're going to have to do is thread this right into here. I'm not going to attempt to do this with one hand because I don't want to cross thread this. So I'm going to throw this line in here. And uh, another issue that I found was that somebody has previously done these brakes before and they've taken this caliper off. When I went to take the caliper bolts loose, these are 21s. First one up top, <clears throat> excuse me, came loose just fine. The bottom one, not so much. And I'll show you what happened when I get back. Here are our two caliper bolts that I just took out. This one is your normal bolt. This is not the correct thing. This looks like a lug with a washer on it. Somebody just stuck in here, which it is. These are the correct bolts. This is what you should have in there. So we're going to be replacing this with the correct stuff. Um, up here, first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is get my pads out of here. This is my new pad that I'd stuck in here before. I realized that the other piston was froze up over there. We're just going to take that out of there. We're going to change that sensor on there, too. All right, since I've got those bolts out already, uh, looks like my next task is to get this line out of here. It looks like it's just a plastic retainer. Looks like I'm going to have to push the ends of it in right here. So that's what it looks like. Yeah, those look like they go in. And this should pop right off of here. Uh, Took the liberty of cracking my line loose already, which is an 11 millimeter, if you're interested. And these caliper bolts are a 21. So what I'm going to do is get this little cover off of here and get that out of the way. Got that line loose, and I'll see if I can show everybody how that releases. It's got a little retaining snap clip on here, kind of. Shift this light around. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little bevel on the end of that. And you have to push that in. Come on, camera, focus. You push that in and you'll lift up on it and it'll come right up. It's like a cover. There we go. So that is how you get that line free from there. Now we can work on getting our line loose here. What I'm going to do is once I've got this all the way loose, I am going to slide my new caliper line up in here and with the caliper attached and 
try and get all of this in here without really losing a whole lot of fluid. So I'll be right back. My life, what I've done is I've hung the caliper over here and I got my new line ready to go back in. And if you notice, the line has a notch on this side as well as on this side. So it will only go into this bracket one direction. And it looks like our notch is right there and there should be one in the rear. As I take this line loose, I'll pull the other piece out of here. Let's see. Yeah, it should just come right out. Fighters, get that in. Start on the line in there. have my old caliper disconnected so what I'm going to do is just get this line out of here Flashing everywhere. All right, tell out. And let's see if I can bring you all over here to see this is what I did. I just had the caliper suspended in the air with a bungee cord just to give me some excess play with this hose to get it up in there. So now that I've got that all in place, I'm going to buckle my line back down it goes right in here across this rubber section of the hose and we will get our caliper back in place so once I've got that all together I'll come on back got my caliper bolted back up with the correct bolts and what I'm gonna do is take this old sensor out of here we're gonna be changing this putting a new one in just Pry that out of there with a screwdriver. This one's actually probably still good. The terminals are still intact. Yeah, one on that side, another one over there. So they're still intact, but we're going to be changing that anyway. And let's put this in. We're putting that in right. Yeah, looks like it. Uh, looks like that might be the wrong way. Make sure we put it in there right. There we go. I see the little bar across there now. All right, and what's going to happen here is we are going to slide our pad in. Of course, that's not going to want to act right either. And we'll get our other pad in because it should fit now. There we go. Perfect. And we're going to stick our pins in here. So let me get this set up so you all can see, and I'll be right back. What we're going to do is get our pins back in here. And I'm going to get a hammer, and we're going to tap these in until they reach... That edge right there should be equal to the 
uh, caliper. All right, so I'll knock those in and uh, we'll go on to the next step from there. Almost forgot to put our spring in here. What we gotta do is get, get him in there. And we will battle to get this in, of course. Okay. And I'll tap those in the rest of the way. So now, we're going to put our connector back on here for our pad sensor. Just going to get that started. And we're going to connect our wire back in here. Maybe I should have connected it before. There we go. Okay, so that's in. We're just going to tighten this up. And this was an E10. Remember, this is plastic, so you don't have to gorilla torque it. Okay, good enough. And the only thing left to do here is we're going to bleed the brakes. So excuse me, bleed the caliper. And our bleeder screw is right here. So we're going to take that little rubber tit off of there. And I'm going to go ahead and bleed this out. And I'll be right back. Folks, I've got all this back together. Got everything bled out. The only thing left to do is put my little cap on here. Make sure this is tightened up all the way. cap and that should about conclude this everything's back together all right if this helped you out any hit that like button hit the subscribe button they'll hit the share button and i will see you on the next one